I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. Inspired by the life of the savvy and ambitious Colombian businesswoman Griselda Blanco comes a new Netflix original limited series. Griselda tells the story of a devoted mother who, with her lethal blend of charm and relentless savagery, creates one of the most powerful cartels in history. Witness Sofia Vergara's captivating transformation into the godmother of the underworld. Griselda, now streaming only on Netflix. ABCs. Welcome to the Bare Naked ABCs, where we examine every Bare Naked Lady song one at a time alphabetically. This week, everyone from the podcast has told me to F off. <laughs> and we are falling into oblivion. Um, as a matter of fact, it is the first time that we'll be recording with just me and a guest while I plug in everyone else's thoughts. <laughs> so, I would like to introduce the guest really quickly, really early on here, since we have no one else. Um, and I'm actually very excited to introduce this guest. We have with us tonight the musical genius of Jeff Whitmire. Hey everyone, how you doing? If you are not familiar with Jeff, then you need to go to his YouTube t- channel and become familiar with Jeff. I absolutely love the music videos that you have put together. Thank you. Um, I don't know if there are other things to <laughs> to, to do- delve into, uh, but I will say the music videos, like I have been laughing hysterically all week and my wife has been like wondering what's wrong with me. Because <laughs> I usually do it with the earphones in. So, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> All she hears is me over in the corner cackling. Cackling now, in the corner at nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Just, <laughs> that, that sounds like a That's song, usually not that. It, yeah, it does sound like a song. <laughs> <laughs> album two, maybe. I don't <laughs> Now, you, speaking of which, you have a new album coming out in the beginning of August. Is that correct? I do. That is the plan. Uh, my first album, uh, Deep Fried Superhero, is coming out at the beginning of August. It's going to feature some songs that, if you're familiar with the YouTube channel, you're going to know. Um, as well as a, a good chunk of new ones and songs that you may know done differently. So it's uh, 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 the beginning of August is the goal. I'm going to be working on it this weekend, hopefully finishing it up. So that's the plan. I, I have to say that I am very excited. Uh, there are very few songs on there that, that I have not thoroughly enjoyed. I was writing <laughs> down the list. I'm like, oh. The, the, the ones you didn't enjoy aren't on the album, though. I should point that oh, out. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> you know exactly which ones. I know. I know which ones you didn't enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> I heard you cackling. <laughs> <laughs> From Maine. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. I have to say that my favorite one, though, is the first one that I heard. The other ones are absolutely wonderful as well, but Nerf Herder Girl. Uh, okay. Love song for a fangirl. <laughs> You're my new hope. My Like automatically, like one of my new favorite songs. Thank you, um, and I can't wait to put it on my my iPod so I can listen to it in the car constantly. I'm uh, I'm really proud of that one. It was uh, not originally planned. I had done. Uh, I was going to do the uh, suddenly Star Wars one about the Last Jedi. That was the one that was planned for the YouTube channel. And then I was driving one day and uh, I had Sirius on. They had a Beach Boys channel for a little while, and Surfer Girl came on, and I'm just like I'm kind of singing along. I'm like I would love to do a song to this with all the harmonies and the melodies and just. Gorgeous song, and I'm like, what can I do? And all this, the phrase nerf herder just jumped in my head. And uh, I, I came home, and it was one of those nights where my wife was like, oh, no, he has an idea. I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went over to the corner, and I sat down, and I think pretty much wrote most of it, you know, uh, within the hour. And just played with the harmonies and just put everything together, just wrote like a four-piece harmony for it. Yeah, I, just, I love the way that one came out, so I, I appreciate that you like it so much. 
one it, it sounds very much in tune with the beach boys uh it, you know when you wrote the four-part harmony it it fits perfectly so yes thank you i appreciate that <laughs> I, I do try and uh you know as much as possible i don't have necessarily the vocal chops um of a lot of a lot of comedy musicians to get that panache down uh to sound like i mean the the oreo speed wagon one i think i kind of got but um and, and to a certain extent, the Weird Al one. But, um, yeah, I try and make them sound as much like the original as possible. Now, the Weird Al one, which one was that? Uh, that is uh, Tickets for Weird Al in Sarasota. If I could do anything, I would see the guy live who recorded Yoda. I said, babe, I'm going to get you tickets for Weird Al in Sarasota. I hear that Weird Al's playing live in Sarasota. Um, I actually did a parody Uh-oh. of... Biggest ball of twine in Minnesota. Yeah, I did not catch that. You one. haven't heard that one. That's yeah. I have not heard that one. <laughs> yeah, I have found a new thing to listen to tonight. Uh, yeah, yeah. I wanted to do a, a tribute to Weird Al, and I said, "How am I going to do this? I'm I'm kind of a believer in go big or go home." I said, "Well, if I'm going to do a, a tribute to Weird Al, let's parody an original, and let's just take on the big boy." And uh, yeah, I um, wrote a, uh, a, I, um, a long story song, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Insane Ian, who's very uh, big in the comedy music world, um, uh, came in to help with that one vocally and lyrically. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a road trip song with, we, we counted about 55 references I snuck in there to Weird Al. So if you're a Weird Al fan, yes, you, you have to listen to that song. Definitely. <laughs> And you also have, of course, have the one that you wrote with Michael Hunter, fan of the yes. friend of the show, Michael Hunter. Um, it's the end of the game, yes. as we know it. I had the chance uh, to meet Mike Hunter out at MarsCon in Minnesota. We were both nominated for a Logan Award, um, our first year putting songs out. And we both got nominated for a Comedy Music Award for uh, songs that we put out. So we had the chance to go out, and we actually met and became close friends. We, we spent the whole time hanging out. When I had the idea to do an Endgame parody to It's the End of the World as We Know It, I said, I, I've got to bring him on board. That song is all harmony. It's all too vocal. And I messaged him, and he said, well, I'm actually doing a Marvel song, too. I'm doing a Marvel parody to Black Eyed Peas. And I said, well, that's perfect. Let's do, do yours. We'll do mine. And we'll put them out on the same weekend. And that's actually what we did. And that was, that was a lot of fun getting them on board on that one. No, and I've heard the other one. I just just recently got the end of the game as we know it. It's it's fabulous. You guys do a great job with that. And I had to make sure I had my my earphones plugged in on that one so the kids didn't overhear the the plots. So. The, the spo- the, so they didn't get spoilers or anything. <laughs> exactly. My kids are very young, um, and so we 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 don't let them li- watch the the PG thirteens yet. So understood. See, that's I actually have five kids. And um, ranging from uh, um, a nine-month-old to an 11-year-old. And, um, yeah, and uh, they've actually... It's really hard to hide my music from them, which I know sometimes can get a little risque. My kids actually walk around (laughs) singing Chocolate Kraken. And if you've you've heard Chocolate Kraken, you know that I'm like... you. You're going to go to school doing this, aren't you? And they're like, and they'll, then they'll be like, I wrote a poop song. And I can't tell them don't write a poop song when I essentially did. Right. <laughs> And I'm going to put it on an album. <laughs> that, makes me, that makes me a hypocrite. But yeah, my daughter, my five-year-old daughter will walk around singing, Hey There, Momoa. Which is, <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, it's been an interesting trip this last year with this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited to hear the album when it comes out. So now how do people get it when it does come out? That is a good question. How, how we're going how we're gonna to do this is I'm going to do it as a, uh, I'm going to put it on Bandcamp, Bandcamp.com. I do have a Bandcamp page. It's also Jeff Whitmire 47. And um, that's where I've been putting the stuff that you hear on YouTube. Not all of that is produced. It's not all professionally done. I, I got my start just uh, singing on Smule, the karaoke app. And that was all I was going to do was just do these parodies and put them on YouTube. And that was it. And then when I got kind of uh, pulled into the world of doing this, I had to do it professionally and get a, get a producer and get a better, better equipment and, and make this right. So the stuff that's professionally produced is on Bandcamp. I kind of stopped putting anything out because I want some surprises, but um, I will be announcing on my YouTube channel when it's for go. I did do an Indiegogo, so that'll be out uh, for backers the last week of July, but I will announce on my Twitter, Jeff Whitmire one. I'll announce it on YouTube when we're ready to go. Um, and the album will be available on Bandcamp. I do have an account to get it put up on uh, Apple and Spotify, um, iTunes, I should have said. 
but yeah, so it, I'm I'm gonna make sure it's 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 out there everywhere. So, um, but when it's ready to go, I'll announce that. Nice. Now you didn't. I'm guessing, but I'm guessing that you did not get Don was for your producer. I did not get Don was for my producer. No. <laughs> <laughs> but the bare naked ladies did. They did. Yeah, song. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that is a nice. Actually, that, that was a nice tie-in. That was. <laughs> I, I've been searching for a couple minutes on that one. So. <laughs> So this week we're going to be discussing falling for the first time. I'm so fly, that's probably why it feels just like I'm falling for the first time. Of course, Don Was worked on the whole Maroon album. Don Was, if people don't know, and why don't you if you don't know, Don Was, along with being a magical producer who has done a million different bands... Um, and so I can't even start to list off all the different bands that he's worked with. Before that, he was part of Was Not Was, the band that did Walk the Dinosaur. Don had something to say about this song, which was that he states it celebrates the human mistakes and that nice guys sometimes do bad things and have <laughs> to pay for the mistakes. That's an interesting take because it's not what the band kind of says no, about this completely. Song. Yeah, yeah, completely different, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, this album originally this song was on Maroon, but it also came out on Disc One, their their greatest hits. Mm-hmm. Which Steven says this in the sleeve. However, y- you have to also take Steve's word as kind of. <laughs> Tongue in cheek, so it may not be totally true. We wanted to write a song about a perfectionist who discovers the joy of failing, which that totally makes sense. Like that fits yep. exactly what the song is. Um, how he's got to learn to fall before he learns to fly, and how that fall makes him feel freedom that he's never felt before. I guess that's why we removed these lyrics that Ed had improvised. And so then he adds in the lyrics Anyone itchy must be chafing anything chafing must be red anything red must be important anyone important is already dead <laughs> that is a really odd set of lines ed i kind of feel like chafing for the first time would have been a good title though <laughs> that's true <laughs> feels just like chafing for the first time that sounds like a totally different type of song it's a rodeo song <laughs> <laughs> I now want to hear you do that <laughs> I, I, song. See, the, the more I'm talking about this, the more I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Lyrics are just running oh. through my head as we speak right now. <laughs> <laughs> we we will now... Uh, can you... A little thank you in the liner notes okay, on the yeah, second yeah, album. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, th- so this is a Paige Robertson song. It is the third single that came off from this album. I didn't know this, but it also appeared on the soundtrack for Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah. It's also on the extended versions, although I'm not quite sure why, because it's not like the song is longer than the typical, and there's not much added in on the extended versions. So it's an odd choice for them to put it on there. I mean, I agree with the the sentimentality that it, or the description of the song that it is about the joy of a perfectionist learning how to fail. Right. I've always kind of felt that's what the song was about anyways. And me being a perfectionist as I am, like this song has always spoken to me. Yeah. I always, I mean, I like the thought, the sen- the sentimentality of it, it being like someone who um, almost comes to terms with the fact that, you know, it's, it's okay to fall. It's okay to be human for a little while. There's almost uh, something cathartic about that. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting, it's called Falling for the First Time instead of Failing for the First Time, because that's right. really what it's a, is, is about. Um, so it's an interesting analogy that they really don't delve into in the song, which is something they don't do very often, of not delving into the metaphor that they're using. Right. So, an odd song for them at this point in their, their career. But what did you think? We don't have Aaron here to break down the music. Um, we, we will have his audio in the future, which we will place in right here. So again, for this week, unfortunately, we are not able to have Aaron join us. Um, so I'm just going to give you the basics that I found on TuneBat.com for our music statistics. Um, I would like to share that Falling for the First Time 
while it has been on four different albums. By the way, I missed one earlier when we were recording. Um, it is also on Hits from Yesterday and The Day Before. Um, all the time, this song is done, according to TuneBat.com, in the F-sharp major key, and it runs at 144 beats per minute. I don't have a lot more breakdown on it. Hopefully, um, someday down the road, we'll be able to have Aaron come back and do some breakdown on the song, because I am not musically adept. Wow, Aaron, that was absolutely amazing. Thank you. Great job, Aaron. Thank you. (laughs) That was awesome. (laughs) <laughs> that was also the shortest bare naked lady song i believe next to um the the, the cow one <laughs> yeah that makes sense it, it seems like it's one of the shorter ones if you if you, you also have to cut out all of the children's album of course yeah right that's true yeah uh, yeah but yeah for a regular song this is and i guess we have to count the cow song as a regular we, song we do have yeah it's on an, <laughs> it's, it's an album track so we <laughs> I actually got that jumbled in my head because as I was saying that, I'm like, wait, that was a B&L song because I had just watched The Wiggles with my kids and they have that song, <laughs> I'm a Cow. I eat grass and I boo all day, I'm a cow, I'm a cow. <laughs> and I'm like, the Bare Naked Ladies did do a cow song. And I was like, yes, yeah, maybe you should drive. There's that, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. an Andy song. I don't it, it, know. It, yes, yes. <laughs> I am going to be really... When we hit that 50,000 years from now, <laughs> and I always mix up the title of that one, too, because... Is it, hey, I'm a cow? Hey, I'm a cow, I'm serious. Yeah. That one. Well, it's the tiny little song, or is it little tiny song? Little, I can never remember. Little tiny song, yeah. Um, I think it's right. tiny little song, because I always want to say little tiny song. Right. And they do it, and they, they, they put the adjectives in the different order so we won't hit that until like mm. it's little 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 tiny song little tiny song yeah, okay. i just had a gts <laughs> i was trying to look through all my albums over here i'm like i am never gonna get through all of those in time no nope. yeah. <laughs> now so here's an interesting fact that i was i found in in researching this song following the terrorist attack on september 11th clear channel put out a list of songs that they deemed inappropriate to play on the right. radio. This was one of them. Yep. I was going to drop that fact bomb and just blow your mind. <laughs> you it. you it's totally hard to do stole, that. Totally stole my thunder there. But. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You want me to back up? We can edit that. No, that, that, that's, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, you, it's your podcast. You roll with it. <laughs> but they have, like, the songs that they have yeah. on this list are just I didn't look up the list, but weird. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let, let me throw off a couple of these songs here and, and get you like see what you think about this. But I I don't understand where they're coming from on this. So Martha and the Vandellas original version of Dancing in the Street. And Van Halen version was. What? Oh, jump, jump, yeah. Or no, well, no Van Halen's version of, of Dancing in the Street was also on the right. list. Right, okay. So the, oh, let me back up. So so you have Martha and the Vandellas and Van Halen's version of Dancing in the Street were included on this list. So you, they were not allowed to be played on Clear Channel Radio. However, right. David Bowie's and Mick Jagger's version were not on the list. So the original 60s version could not be played on Clear Channel. Okay! <laughs> Or in, <laughs> in Van Halen's version, but or David Van Bowie and Mick Jagger were good to go. How does that work? I know. <laughs> wow. Falling out around the world, are you ready for a brand new beat? So then you have Peter, Paul, and Mary's leaving on a jet plane. I can... That's... I'm leaving on a jet plane. I don't... Kind of, but well, you're gonna have to cut out every song that has airplane mentioned in it if you're gonna do something like that. It's so unrelated, though. I mean, the song had been around. I mean, I mean, I see that, but I mean, I guess they didn't want to, you know, stir up negative feelings. I I get that, but I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's. But here's the weirder thing: the version that was done by the guy who wrote it, John Denver, was not on the list. 
How does that work? <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> where did they just pull these songs out of that they're like, nope, we're not going to put that on there. Every place I go, I'll think of you. Every song I sing, I'll sing for you. When I come back, I'll bring your wedding ring. Louis what? Armstrong's What a Wonderful World was on this list. Because Why? they believed that happy music was inappropriate following the attacks. <laughs> but, we, but we got three years of Alan Jackson. Exactly. <laughs> Doing, yeah, they wow. also excluded the Beatles. Ooh. What Beatles got hit? A Day in the Life. Okay, well. <laughs> some explosion. The, guy in the car died. The guy in the car, yeah. I'll That's... give him that one. <laughs> Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. I don't... Uh, I've gone through that song a million times in my head and cannot come up with a lyric that in, in any I way... I mean, in, in the Sky, I guess, but you're kind of stretching there, too. That's, but Yeah. yeah. Obla di Obla da. What? Yeah. <laughs> I don't get that one at all. Once again, it must be that like, oh, we can't listen to happy we, we, music. We right can't. Now. We can't be happy right now. We have to. Yeah. And ticket to ride. Oh well, okay. I can. Uh, I can see where they went with that one, but you know, it's stretching. It still though. Uh, like it, the, it's still. It's still. Oh yeah. They're talking well, about all, a train. Like right. Yeah. That's like that's like them saying, well, let's take off. They didn't do this. I'm surprised though, and take off Monkey's last train to Clarksville. I mean, come on. Right. So it's, one train song was problematic, but the, that train song was not. Right, because it explicitly says train, so... You know. Right, yes, yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> so kind of going back real quick to the music, because I skipped over it after we left Aaron. So we, have Aaron we have Ed Robertson on lead vocals, acoustic, and electric guitar. We have Jim Cregan on electric bass, of course. We have Kevin Hearn on piano and synth, synth and Tyler on drums. And then we have Ron Mangione on tambourine. Mm -hmm. I don't hear the tambourine a lot in this song, and I'm no yeah. confused also about why they wouldn't just have Tyler do it because it's not right. like Tyler's not talented he, with the tambourine. Well, I gotta say Tyler was busy in this song. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> like I one one note I will make is that Kevin and Tyler just rule this track, uh, especially from the second half to the end. They're oh the, yeah. The keyboard work and the percussion in this song are fantastic. Um, and it's just like, it, I think I've heard it described as the wall of sound that it really is. Like when you get towards the end, that build is just unbelievable. And I, and I, and I'm a, and I'm a Kevin fanatic. Um, I saw them live after Kevin came on board. Um, I saw them, uh, for the peep show for the E2E, uh, peep show. And, um, I, I just love his keyboard work and I, oh. Kevin, <laughs> he is phenomenal to watch playing on and, and most of the songs that he does, but this is one of those songs that is just amazing to watch him play. Just unbelievable. Yeah. But yeah, I, I I guess they maybe they were trying to hit it in one take or something, and that's why they felt like they had to bring someone in to do tambourine for for Tyler to cover on that, maybe? Because right. he does tambourine on the other songs. Right. But yeah, yeah, I mean I love the end of this song because it feels very much like that built in like so the song is about this person who is finding the happiness and the freedom in failing but at the end like there's a building chaos and a building anxiety that kind of goes with this song that you've like a person that is a perfectionist you might feel that freedom and failing but you're also all that anxiety of like failing is also building at the same time and I like that programmaticness to the music that's going on here. Right. Well, and it builds up to that glorious, uh, I mean, a double line. And I love the line, uh, what if I nurse this infection? So when you go through the <laughs> lyrics, I mean, he's clearly um, talking about loss and, and, and everything that's gone up. And that, that bridge just builds and builds and anything loved can be lost. What if I lost my direction? What if I lost my sense of time? What if I nurse this infection? And then it just kind of sneaks in that, that um, you know, gets that what if what if the worst is behind? What if the worst, or maybe the worst is behind? And um, it just, it kind of closes out. Like, it's that feeling of exuberance. Like, hey, you know, for the first time, I faced failure. I faced what it's like to not be perfect. Um, you know, uh, everything had to be in such order. I And I actually, I'll, I'll be open about this. I suffered from OCD all my life. Went through the, I was, I was literally the clinical monk. The first time we watched Monk. Um, my mom just laughed the whole time and she's like, that's you. <laughs> and 
I went through, and, and I guess everybody who does any kind of artistic work, we all we all have our little, you know, quirks or whatever. But for me, that was it, and I, I went through exposure therapy and all that. But I know for OCD, everything had to be in such order. Everything had to be so, um, and, you know, I've gone through a lot and improved, but everything had to be in such order. And I had to realize the same thing here, you know, you know, it's okay if something isn't. It's okay if things aren't, you don't get that closure or if things aren't perfect. Right. Um, and I think that's one reason, like, when, when you know, I you gave me the choice of the songs to pick. This one always kind of hit me like that. And Maroon was the first uh, B&L album I ever played. Really? It actually was, yeah. Um, I actually I actually was a late bloomer. I started late. I had heard one week, uh, you know, on the radio. I liked it. I can actually tell the story. But I heard one week on the radio, um, you know, and everything. I, I liked it. It was cool. Um, I had even heard, uh, I think, Pinch Me floating around and, and really love Pinch Me. I, it's one of my favorite songs ever. Um, but still didn't buy an album. And then uh, my girlfriend at the time was really into NHL Live on the PS2. Uh, what was the song on there? It was the... Uh, oh. But it was uh, It's Only Me. Yes. And that song came on. And that was the first time I think I actually said, oh, man, these guys are amazing. Lyrically, Paige's voice, um, the instrumentation. And then that's I, we just happened to go to a fair the next day. And they had Maroon sitting there in a used bin. And I picked it up. And that was the end of the story. And... <laughs> Since then, it was every album, get to see them live, and yeah, so that was the starting point. So Maroon's kind of always been one of those that, maybe not necessarily my favorite B&L album, but it's always been at the top for me just because it was the one that started it, and, and I, I just love the tracks on there. And, um, you know, this one especially just just hit me because I, it was personal. I have to ask, what is your favorite B&L album then? Uh, maybe You Should Drive oh. is, actually my, is actually my favorite one. Uh, collectively, I would say... Um, that's the one that, uh, can do no wrong in my, there's never, I mean, I should, I shouldn't say there's ever an album I don't want to listen to, but, um, <laughs> the, for being at, well, maybe there, one there's two, but, one that I can the, I, I should, off the bat. Yeah, I should say, if I'm being honest, yeah, there, there are a few, but. Although but, I have to, I have to say, I'm hoping that that, by listening to it song by song out of order, I'm hoping that it will surprise me with those few songs in there that I was like, oh, I didn't realize how much I liked that song. And right, it might actually take a twist for me in the future. So. Well, and it's it's kind of weird because my favorite album is the one that has the cow song on it, which <laughs> 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 so I, I have to justify that one. But uh, <laughs> but other than that, I mean, just um, um, maybe you should drive uh, life in a nutshell. A uh, I just it just gets me every time I. Oh, I love life in a nutshell. I can't wait to get to that one. Yes, I fantastic song. Uh, that's definitely one that whenever I'm driving, if that one comes on, it the windows go down, it gets cranked up. I'm I'm at the top of my lungs singing it. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to what you were saying before with the lyrics, like I love the, you know, some of the lyrics that Ed writes when he's just improvising and going along, and and for me, like one week and when we get there, I'll, there'll be a lot of discussion around that. Don't make a lot of sense. Don't connect to me. They're fun. They're listened to, but they don't mean much you get the feeling of that with these lyrics but at the same time if you really delve into those lyrics though like and it's the chorus especially that that that's this way if you delve into the chorus as you were saying the meaning behind it is very very specific and and is perfect yeah you know anyone perfect must be lying you know i love that Talking about a perfectionist, like, no, no one's Mm -hmm. perfect. We like to try to, perfectionists love to try to pretend that we are perfect and we, we don't like to try to pretend it. We just, we want to be perfect and we push it. Um, We need to convince ourselves of that. Like, (laughs) yes, (laughs) yes. Anything easy has its cost. And from a perfectionist point of view, like everything is going to be hard. Like you're right. Nothing's ever going to be easy. And so you, you build this this sense of like no everything easy has its cost like you're you're by making things easy for yourself you're you're giving in so no that's that's a bad thing don't do that or i'm doing something wrong this was too easy i mean how many perfectionists right. say that you know that would that was too easy you know <laughs> right i did something wrong <laughs> yeah yeah something something something's wrong about this that was <laughs> or or there's there's a catch you know the next part doesn't make a lot of sense but i love the lyric anyways anyone playing can be lovely which i love but it doesn't necessarily match up with the perfectionist um anyone love can be lost 
beautiful lyric again. Yep. What and then it goes back into that once again. If this person's a perfectionist that is falling and failing for the first time, what are the things? What are the thoughts that are going to go through their head? That is, what's the ex- causing all the anxiety? And yep. you know, a lot of the times we might not be able to identify it, but once we sit down and we identify it, like these next lyrics make a lot of sense to that it's, it's facing the uncertainty i think it's a, that that darkness of what what if i actually drop this like what if i actually right. let go for a second how bad is it going to get for me like if i stop doing what i've always known right what if i lost my direction what if i lost a sense of time what if i nurse this infection ah like it's getting worse and worse yeah, like yes, all yeah. these like worries and concerns <laughs> and then finally he comes to resolution. Maybe the like you had said, maybe the worst is behind. Maybe maybe that anxiety about failing was the worst of it. Maybe maybe the worst part of this is kind of gone. So right. it's and then of course you have the lyrics throughout the whole thing for the verse of them coming up with all these opposites of, you know, I'm too chill, you know, uh, With the the my personal favorite, I'm so saying it's driving me crazy. Yes, love that line. Oh I, my I goodness! B and L has a habit of um, sticking those lines in there that just kind of come out of nowhere because they're so well written. I've always been a lyric guy, and and they're so well written. They're so just turning the screw kind of things. Um, you know, like like um, I'll lick my wounds past the salt. Of course, exactly. Uh, <laughs> you know that kind of line, and. Um, you know, I'm so saying it's driving me crazy just is a line that I think is so brilliant and so, so well sung by Ed. Like, he just nails this. Oh. And it, I, the, like, there's a number of those lines in here, but it builds up to that line so well. Yeah. Yep. I love, like, the line bef- like earlier in that, I'm so smart, too bad I can't get anything figured out. That describes yep. me to a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> like, it describes me so well. Like, I know that I'm smart. But I can't think anything. I can't figure it all out. Like, oh, what's wrong with me? Right. And you know, I'm so brave. Too bad I'm a baby. Like that—that's that's definitely a me line. That hits me. Um, <laughs> that whole thought that you know, I've got I built up so much confidence and I can do this. You know, like doing an album is. Um, you know, I'm 43 years old. I just turned 43 in June. Um, and after you know decades of doing music and writing music and always wanting that to be my life and my passion, you know, finally setting out doing this, you know, I'm. I, um, you know, a little bit of moment of openness here. You know, I'm coming at it with all this confidence. I know what I'm doing. I, I know I, I stand behind it and I'm proud of it. But, you know, um, just that whole feeling like every time a lyric's not right or any time this doesn't come out, you know, I know that I, I probably throw that tantrum a little more than I should. <laughs> and I will I will gladly admit I will I will stand on my soapbox and say I am a tantrum thrower. And I, <laughs> you know... <laughs> Um, at least a mental tantrum thrower, I guess you could say, and uh, just right. knowing like, no, you've got to be able to accept that you'll stand behind what you're doing. You know, it's okay to fall a little bit. It's okay not to be perfect. And um, realizing how much I love this song, the more we're talking about it. Yeah, I know, the more we t- <laughs> delve into it. Wow. It's one of those songs that I I will sit there and sing with every time mm. it comes on because it, it is an earworm in a lot of ways as well. Yep. Oh, yeah. Which they're good at. They're good at that. Oh, they are. But yeah. what I love more about them is not only when it's an earworm, but on top of it, when you stop and you listen to it and you, you really delve into the lyrics, it right. gives it a whole new level. Oh, yeah. And this is this is Paige and Robertson working on working together on, like, everything is firing, and it's it's just them. This is perfect B&L in a lot of ways. Right. So. In a lot of ways, it's the the life in a nutshell for me of the song because life in a nutshell is like that too. It's it's mm-hmm. you could sit and analyze that song, you know, all day. Just just the little quirks and everything in it, and it's just what they do so well when they play off each other. And we probably will a year from now. We probably- <laughs> <laughs> You're oh, more than welcome lot- back for that one. I would love to. I would love to. So do that yeah, one. I we've we've talked a lot about this song. Yeah. What we haven't talked about is the bathroom session version of the song. Right. So there is a bathroom version of the song. What are your thoughts on it? I I'll delve into mine in a minute, but what are your thoughts on it? Um I I love the bathroom sessions because I think um 
I I could probably be in the mood to pick one over the other. Honestly, there there would be a time because I I, I love it when Ed is stripped down. I love it when um he just it's just him vocally because he's got the band behind him. It was always that kind of a for obviously for a long time the back and forth between him and Steve. Um, he does some things vocally in that song, uh, in the bathroom version, the, the bathroom sessions that I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. That said, um, if I were to have listened to the first one first, with the first, which I did, and heard, like I mentioned, the great work from Kevin and Tyler, I miss it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's hard for me to, knowing the song in its studio version, and the work that they put into that and that build. But that said, I mean, there's definitely probably a point in one of my periods maybe where I'm not feeling it and I need this song. That just listening to Ed on acoustic guitar singing the song might be very therapeutic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, I can, you know, I, I can get some enjoyment out of the bathroom session. And I, and I agree with you. There are things about the bathroom session that I really enjoy that I wish I could hear more of in the regular song. In the studio, yeah, right. But I have to say, like, it, it's like listening to, like, the the tapes of John Lennon when he's putting the music together and thinking about right. it, and you know where it's going to end up, and you're like, I like where it ends up. <laughs> yep. And I, and I feel that way when I'm listening to, and that's not the way it is with all bathroom session songs. That's just the way it is for me on this song, just because right. I love the original so much. Right. Um, I know that's a, a difference between my wife and I because she's got a lot of music that she's a uh, fan favorite of. She likes when they release the demos. Mm. But uh, she she's someone, she loves John Mayer. She loves a lot of artists like that. She likes to uh, she likes it when they go back to their roots and, and play the yeah. demo versions or play the early stuff. And I uh, really enjoys that. To a certain extent, so do I, too. But like I said, if I get a song like this where I've, I've seen the final product, I've seen the build, I've seen the rest of the band get to really shine... Yeah, I kind of, I, I, I want that. I, I think in yeah. this, for this song, that's that's the version that I would probably go to. Now, what are your thoughts on the video? I don't know if you had a chance to watch the video this week. Oh, I'm very familiar with the video. Uh, first of all, <laughs> um, <laughs> we we binge, uh, binge B&L in this house. But uh, um, Harlan Williams, first of all, come on. <laughs> Kevin's cousin <laughs> as <laughs> as the security guard. Um, I mean, it's, it's and he great. he's just it's, hamming it up. Like, he, he is, is just like... He is, Hamming up, getting mad at the monitor, just uh, just full on <laughs> trying physical to pull comic the thing genius. Out, like, <laughs> um, they must have just told him, like, okay, here's like the basic thing that we need to kind of. Here's our start. Here's our end. Whatever you do in the middle, totally your call. When I wonder how much of that was planned too, because for the bulk of the video, eighty percent, eighty five percent of the video is the band playing. It's just them in, what, the white room playing. And I kind of feel like maybe that was the video and someone said, we've got to do something else with this. And the idea for the whole security guard museum, Harlan Williams things came up. Um, you know, Kevin's like, hey, my cousin can, you know, step in here. <laughs> <laughs> my cousin's actually and, kind of funny. <laughs> my cousin is very funny. <laughs> I got a guy who can do this. I, I know a guy. Um, uh I, I love the video. I think it, I think it's perfect, and just that whole little wrap up at the end with that uh, at the end with them sneaking out of the museum with the the art. That is what totally makes it is like I, I like the video and I enjoy like the, the the antics of Harlan Williams throughout the whole thing. And then at the end, that the whole thing was set up so that the band could actually steal stuff yep. while he was doing going through all of this. Right. That like sealed Which, the deal. Like I was totally all over that video at that point and loved it and will watch it a million times. Perfectly okay with that too cuz it's a video that doesn't really connect with the song. I mean, you'd really have you'd really have a hard time connecting the lyrics that we talked about and that we del- we delved into um, with the actual video, but just that payoff at the end. Oh, um, which this is this is why I was watching it. This was all a setup. This was all a, a clever guys to, yeah, get some great band footage in there playing the song and get some great Harlan in there. And it was all a setup so they could steal, you know, the at artwork. the very end, Steve is walking out with a computer monitor like everyone else has like works of art. Steve right. has a computer yep. monitor. <laughs> <laughs> yep, the, and I think that it's actually the commu- computer monitor that they were doing this whole heist. On. Oh, I don't, I don't doubt it. Yeah, it was. Yeah, <laughs> it was easy to get. It was just sitting there in the garbage can. You know? Right. Like, oh, here we go. And I can't tell what it is that 
that Tyler's walking out with. It just looks like some you kind of the... bag, like maybe he's carrying out money. Kevin and Jim are carrying something together, aren't they? Ke- uh, Jim and and Ed are carrying a, a painting. Like a yeah, okay. <laughs> And I just love how the looks that they're giving the cameras as they go by. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to make yeah. sure that we didn't do this. But oh, I, yeah. It's a, it's a great video. I'm not, I'm not a fan of, of a band just playing for a music video. Like, it, it irritates me because I'm like, well, you could have done something so much more interesting. Right. Um, that's why videos were created in the first place i mean you, right. you don't go back to the the uh the golden age of video and mtv and see bands just playing their songs usually you know it was an art form it was a chance to make like a mini movie um right. so yeah if you're if you're gonna make a video yeah you got to do something fun with it i think and as we talked about with enid a few weeks ago like yeah like that's that's them just playing but they did something really cool and really interesting with the whole thing which is what right. brings it to that next level that what, them adding all this stuff in once again, brings it to that next level. So right. No, and definitely, you look at uh, you know, pinch me in one week, and those are those are epic. Those are fantastic. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait to hit those music videos. <laughs> oh yeah, in three years. In three years. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> as long as they that's, don't release any more albums. That's the second half of the alphabet. Oh yeah, that's true. Being, yeah. I, I want being able to make more albums. At the same time, I see my <laughs> job like expanding Get, every time they do this. <laughs> so, if they release a new album and it has an A song in it, do you have to go? Do you, oh. Does that does that come first then, or I I have a premise. I think of what we're gonna do. Kind of the advantage that the Weird Alphabet has is that there's there's I mean, right now Weird Al's not putting out a lot of stuff. So right. I mean, he could, he might, but I don't put it past Ed and the Boys to you know put out another triple album you know at the end of the well, year yeah exactly and steven's talking about about he's working on this next album i'm like oh goodness gracious yeah right yeah we haven't even touched the steven solo stuff yet oh so, yeah <laughs> there is a cover of this song i don't know if you've heard it wait what there is a cover of this song Do it I is done it? by cornbread red it's just a band that does a lot of bluegrass music and actually has their own album called pinch my bluegrass I'm so thrilled to finally be failing and I'm so done, turn me over Cause it feels just like I'm falling for the first time um, So it's a bluegrass cover Of Bare Naked Ladies right. songs And the whole album is just Bare Naked Ladies Oh Well it's not them, it's this album This is this band doing only bare naked ladies what is cornbread that red so this is one of the songs on it i will have to say and and I'll, if you want you can pull it up and listen to it it's on youtube apparently they do green day too they did don't fear the reaper oh yeah that's actually a really good version i love their version i of might have some reaper. stuff to listen to tonight <laughs> I'm I'm did, did three doors like, down there? saving some money because they do these concept albums like this <sighs> Poking on death. And I've asked them to come on, but they're no longer together, unfortunately. Oh. Okay. I still would love them to come on. Cornbread Red, yeah. if you, any of you are listening, I wish they that you are, that you are more than welcome on any time. I would love to talk with you guys. I will say that this is not my favorite cover of theirs. I'm, I'm looking at the list now, and I'm thinking, which ones probably sound the best? I have to say Brian Wilson's probably up there. <laughs> Brian Wilson is actually amazing. It is a really cool version of it. Um, and their cover of Pinch Me is actually really cool too. And Be My Yoko Ono is pretty Please, close because it's close to their, it's close. The sound is very similar. A little and, surprised they did Maybe Katie though. Yeah. That's, that one, that one kind of sticks out, but yeah. My, my problem with this song is it's already close enough with the speed and the sound that it's not a far jump to do a bluegrass version of this. Yeah, right. Um, and so it doesn't sound... It, it sounds like someone covering it, which is sad. Because uh, these guys right. do do some amazing covers. But I recommend people... You know what? Maybe it is people's favorite version. Go out and listen to it. Give it a try. Who knows? You might love it. So given that, let's put some numbers to this song. Now, we usually rank it from zero to five. Five is absolutely stellar song. Best song you've ever heard. 
Zero, of course, is the worst song you've ever heard and will never listen mm. to it ever again in your life. Okay. You know what? This is the one that always gets me. I'm a perfectionist. I like to look nice. I'm not OCD, but I, 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 the thing that bugs me the most is when I'm eating, I'm sloppy and I don't mean to be. <laughs> so food will always fall on my shirt and stain it. Okay. So we're going to go with how many stains are we giving this song? So zero to five, how many stains do you give this song? All right. I don't know. My OCD doesn't allow me to like stains. And... <laughs> I know. As I said that, I'm like, I'm not really sure. I it was antithetical in a little way. I'll go with mine first. <clears throat> okay. All right. There is nothing about this song that I don't like. There is nothing that I wish for more in this song. Um, and I can't slight it in any way possible. Um, I'm sitting here looking at my other scores that I have, like Call and Answer, and that fall just below. That fall just below. What do you the, have for Call and Answer? The fives. Um, I gave Call and Answer a four point eight. Okay. But right. I have nothing bad to say about this song. There's nothing I would change. Um, so given that, I'm gonna Is have to give it a perfect five. five. I have this to give a this five. a five, and All I, right. I'll let you know that like. Whatever you give it is perfectly fine. <laughs> no, no, I'm. I was actually going to be up there. I would have said too. Um, coming into this tonight, I would have been high. Like I said, it's it's uh, a song that, um, and not everyone should judge a song and what affects me personally, obviously. But that you know, if looking at uh, musically, it's it's a high song for me. Like it, like I said, the instrumentation in the song, uh, Kevin Tyler, Ed's voice, the the lyrics we talked about, so many great lyrics in that build towards the end. It would have been it would have been right around a four point five for me when we started today. But I think the more we talked about it, and kind of the more clarity I got, and the more I realized it went up. So I'm I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna go with the five on this. Oh, one. I I think I think I gotta go with five too. I mean I I don't know what would cause me not to give it a five. I guess there's always that like mental block in your head, like oh it can't be it, you know. We, right. It's not the perfect song, you know. But the more we talked about it, I kind of think yeah it is. It, it <laughs> it's it's that good. Um, yeah. So I gotta I gotta say there's there's nothing I would change and and as soon as we're done here I'm gonna go listen to it. Again. <laughs> I'm gonna um, probably go watch the video again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a five on this one. Hi guys, this is Michelle. I am here to talk about falling for the first time, and I have to say. I love this era of the Bare Naked Ladies. This song is off of Maroon, which Tracy, I'm sure you've already mentioned. I love this song. I love the time period. The music in this song is great. I love the motion of it and the kind of driving force that is the instrument section of the song. The guitar, the drums, everything just kind of is like pushing. It's almost like a wagon that is being pulled by wild horses and you've lost the reins. Like, it's still on the tracks, but boy, oh boy, this wagon is going full steam ahead and it's awesome. Like, you're into the ride of your life. That's what this song is. Um, I will say that I love the lyrics and the lyrical progression in this song. Okay, this is a Steve and Ed song. And I will also say that, to me, this song solidifies... Ed's lyrical prowess. You know what I mean? Like he can, this is where he turns his phrases very nicely. He can, he's got that great turn of phrase. He's got that progression in the chorus. The lyrical progression in the chorus is to me what I compare all things to. So in other songs that we've done where I'm like, and I get all judgy about how the lyrics are too obvious. It's because I'm thinking of falling for the first time. The the progression in the chorus is just perfection. You know, anyone perfect must be lying. Anything easy as its cost. Anyone plain can be lovely. Anyone loved can be lost. What if I lost my direction? What if I lost a sense of time? Like it all just flows one into the next into the next. And it's like this perfect train of thought. And it's captured so beautifully. I just, I love everything about this song. The video is great because, I mean, here you see Harlan Williams sitting at a desk 
And you know that Harlan Williams, who is Kevin's cousin, anything he is in, you know it's going to be good. You know it's going to be interesting. You know you're going to be entertained and you know it's going to be awesome. And I have to also say that before I get to my rating, I am not being objective with this song at all because this comes from Maroon. And this is when I was hardcore into Bare Naked Ladies. Like, this is all I was listening to. All I was listening to was Bare Naked Ladies when this came out. And so, for me, seeing the video when Steve was in his, like, cool, slick leather jacket phase with the short hair and sunglasses, and then Ed is so young, and they're just all, like, it's the five of them enjoying themselves, having a great time, and I just love it. And the, watching the video kind of made me homesick in a way, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? It just makes me uh, nostalgic for another time, I guess you could say. So I loved the video. They just, they looked great. They sound great. The song is so good. Just the lyrics and the the driving force of the song. It's just like anything is possible. Yes, things are just on the verge of coming out of control, but this is so good and it's so awesome. And then you've got the bathroom sessions, which are fabulous. Like you really can see what a good guitar player Ed is. And even though it's just him playing the guitar, if you're listening to him sing and play the guitar in the bathroom sessions for Falling for the First Time, you can hear the whole orchestration of the song while he's playing. It's kind of interesting. Like, it's all there, even though it's just him playing the guitar. So, I love this song. I love the movement of the song. I love the progression of the lyrics. I feel like this song is Ed's best work, as far as a lyricist goes. And maybe I'll change my mind as we get into some other songs down the road. But this song is why some of the other songs I'm so harsh about some of his lyrics. That's really, really the case. Having said all that, this is not my, you know, in my top echelon of BNL songs that I'm always going to go to. Like, this is not quite conventioneers for me. So even though I love the song and it's amazing and it's fabulous, I'm giving it a 4.9 because I do like it a little teeny weeny bit better than everything old is new again. And I gave that a 4.8. So that's my stance. And I hope everyone is having a fabulous day and we'll see you soon. Oh, I did forget to mention, I'm going to cut it in and I'm going to put it in here. There is also a version of the song on the BNL Rocks, Red Rocks. Um, oh, album. yeah, right. Mm-hmm. I will have to say it's not my favorite version of the song. It feels like there's stuff missing. And at the end of the song, I think I figured out what it is. It actually kind of identifies it. It is funny. You have to listen to it just for the end credit, if nothing else. At the end of it, Ed is talking about how it must be really hard for some people to come to Red Rocks and play at Red Rocks. He wants to get this song perfectly right, but he's surrounded in this uh, by this amazing and majestic scenery and admiring the scenery. And so then he feels like he's messing up pieces on the song about being a perfectionist. (laughs) <laughs> uh yeah so i'm like yeah. oh that's just perfect <laughs> yeah oh yeah people haven't heard that version it's not their best in terms of playing but you have to listen to it just for hearing ed talk about it afterwards right i will be honest i'm as much of a music junkie and fanatic i am no genres no ages no anything you know no no eras um i i struggle with live albums a lot even in bands that i love because I, I just kind of feel like I don't know. I was just what I was listening to today. I was listening to. Um, I'm a big fan of Erasure, uh, the '80s mm. synth band Erasure, and um, love their music. Never saw them live. I was listening to you know their stuff today live, and I, I just feel like when you're listening to a live album, there's a part of you that's like, this would be better if I was right. there. <laughs> I want to be <laughs> like, there. Why just, am I not there? Yeah, like I, I don't know. It just seems like some of the the great sound and everything um, that you get from a stereo track. And all the production and everything. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm a production nerd, nerd, a snob by no means. I feel like a lot of times the live versions are just so much better, obviously, if you're hearing them live. 
Um, but that said, with with the Red Rocks album, I do enjoy it. I really and it's one of the, it's one of the live albums I will listen to and I will play. And I, I encourage people to go out there and buy it, just if for no other mm-hmm. reason than to hear them play with Colin Hay on "Who Can It Be Now." Yeah, well, like that's, <laughs> we'll hit that ten yeah. years from now. But right, yeah, it, yeah, it is totally worth it. Can you even fathom the W's at this point? <laughs> no. Like, I'll hit a W. Like, I'll randomly be listening to the music and having it rotate. And as it's shuffling through it, it'll, it'll hit a W. And there's a part of me that gets sad. Because I'm like, right. that seems so far away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what have I started? <laughs> what have I begun? <laughs> when I first started this, I'm like, oh, this will be a nice little thing. Yeah. It, yeah. Not little. It's a nice why didn't thing. I pick that? Not little. Why didn't I pick that band I like that put out an album? Right, exactly. <laughs> that, was, that would have been good. <laughs> Not the one that puts out an album every month. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you said that though. I mean, I guess that's one voice that I absolutely adore. Colin Hayes' voice. Oh, uh, he. Uh, I just. I was just listening to Overkill. My Overkill the other day. Oh my just, goodness. Yeah, voice. My favorite version of Overkill is the one that is on Scrubs. Scrubs. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, and that's automatically what I think. When I hear that song, I think of that opening scene from that Scrubs episode every time. Oh, yeah. Just them walking through and everything, because that, that TV show in, in itself is just, like, like everything to me. But, um, but yeah, that, well, and they also had the Polyphonic Spree on there, which I also have <laughs> guilty pleasure there, but... <laughs> but, yeah, that, 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 that opening scene in that version. So, speaking great. of being L on TV, we're talking about Colin on TV, but we're going to talk about being L on TV... My appearance for this week is that BNL actually was, and no politics involved, BNL was actually on a season of The Apprentice. Um, it was during the last episode of one of their seasons. I don't have the season right now, but I will have the plug on uh, the liner notes for today. Season five. It's season a five. Road. Okay. I was, I was close. It wasn't the beginning. Um, but they... Had the they were the last two people that had to put on a performance, and one of the people had to have a perform have BNL perform for charity and get them get people to donate toward this charity based on seeing the concert with Bare Naked Ladies. Wow. And they did a good performance. They did a good show. It's definitely worth watching. That's awesome. I didn't know that. Well, you know what? <clears throat> we didn't have Aaron. We didn't have Michelle, but I think that we did a pretty good job. I think so, too. That was fun. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. That was great. You know, me and Michelle and Aaron, we're kind of like a power group, but I'm all set to say next week that we should fight the power and do the same thing, but with a different (laughs) guest. Maybe we should even discuss the song, Fight the Power. What is is the song next week? Fight the Power. Oh, it is Fight the Power. Oh, okay. (laughs) So yeah, next week we will have one of our friends joining us. I'm going to give little hints throughout the week about who that person will be that will be joining us. Um, it, I'm looking forward to it uh, for this wonderful kind of B-side that doesn't make it on anything anymore. Uh, so come back and join us next week. And then we'll have Aaron and Michelle joining us again in the near future. <laughs> so have a good week and thanks. That was fun. Have a good night. To celebrate joining Pantheon Podcasts, Rock Camp, the podcast, the official podcast of Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, is giving away a guitar signed by Mike Portnoy of Dream Theater, Marty Friedman, formerly of Megadeth, and legendary shredder Zach Wild, plus our rock star counselors like Vinny Apice, Monty Pittman, and more. To enter to win, simply follow, rate, and review our podcast on your preferred platform, and that's all you have to do. For more information, go to rockcamp.com forward slash podcast.